Hey, everybody. What's going on, brother? I am. This is the worst way to start a podcast, but I, I'll make it go somewhere, I think. Okay. I'm so fucking tired, and it's because <laughs> I've been throwing myself into comedy like a degenerate, mm. and tonight was my first night off, and I was literally like, can we do the podcast at 6.30 <laughs> so I can be asleep by 8? Like, my 40-year-old body cannot handle doing what 25-year-old comic who is trying to, like, impress fucking... Yeah. David Tell in New York. <laughs> like I can't, I can't do it. I've just been like coughing all day. It's a disaster. Well, you are you're in pretty good shape because you uh, you were strangling motherfuckers for the last two hours, right? I fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That that's the only thing that keeps me. Although, but it kind of tricked me because mm-hmm. so I I smoked cigarettes um, when I was a kid, like because that's what fucking poor delinquent kids do, mm. and. And I couldn't even, like, afford them. Like, I stole them from my mom. So, mm-hmm. like, I smoked, like, menthol, Marlboro menthol lights. Um, and, you know, then quit because I fucking <laughs> became a grown-up and started doing comedy again, like, hard in Austin mm-hmm. a couple weeks ago. And in my head, I was like, oh, this will be a fun thing to do. Start smoking Just darts nostalgic. Again, So I smoked a cigarette. And in my head, I'm like, well, I do jujitsu. Like, I literally fight the mm-hmm. best people in the world every day. I was like, it will be impossible for me to get addicted. I thought jujitsu could beat uh, addiction, mm-hmm. and it cannot. Um, no, dude, I, I run got, and I, I got addicted to smoking <laughs> and, you? and stuff. Yeah. Yes, and I was just like, I literally was like, oh, I can just smoke at shows, and then the next day I'll be fine. And then what fucked me was... I was shocked when I saw you smoking a cigarette. I was like, what are you doing? Everybody was. <laughs> Some jujitsu guy recognized me, and like... I could visibly see I disappointed him when he saw me smoke. Like he looked so excited because he knew me from like jujitsu videos or whatever I make on yeah. Instagram. And then I pulled up a cigarette and it, it, it looked, it, it reminded me of the face, like a saved by the bell, like on a saved by the bell, like very special episode where it's like, you see like the cool guy doing cocaine. And it was he, like, he was like that level of fucking disappointed. Oh. And so I, I forget like in my head, mm-hmm. everybody, knows that I'm not a smoker. And so I, w- I would bum cigarettes mm-hmm. and I forgot that everybody who bums cigarettes, who's being a fucking leech yeah. will give some version of, I don't really smoke and assume that they will feel bad for you and whatever. Mm-hmm. And so everyone I bum from was just like, yeah, I know that's what everyone who fucking bums them says. And so you still smoke, but everyone fucking hates you. So I bought a pack to give Dallas yes. at Creek in the cave. hundred percent. Dallas shout out Dallas. The best, the best cheesecake Cheese steak fryer yep. this side yep. of the Mississippi. Yo, yeah. I asked him if he could make me healthy food because I've been derailing. And he uh-huh. made this like shrimp veggie taco thing. So fucking good. Bomb. And so I bought him cigarettes and I'm like, what a good guy I am. And then I show up at the club and I was like, hey, is Dallas here? And they were like, Dallas isn't here. And I was like, well, it looks like I smoke cigarettes. And I just smoked the whole pack. <laughs> and then I bought another pack the next day. And I was like, how? And I've been training. But man, today's my first day Dude, without the cigarettes. The same thing happened to me is like the vapes. Everybody has those little pastel Everybody. cartel things here. Yep. And so you start ripping them and like. Well, you, you make know, fun of them first. You make and then you them. try them and then they're great. They're delicious. <laughs> they're and, so and good. Me and, me and Maddie are both fucking Zin guys, right? So we got those little Zin pooches. And I'm like, okay, I like nicotine, but I don't need to have a vape on me 24-7. No. You go out every single time you go, you see somebody ripping it and you're hammered. You're like, may, may, may I please? And then yep. I did the same thing. Yep. I yep. went and got one and I was like, I'm going to give it to Chris Mueller. Yep. And I didn't, I stuffed it in my pocket and yep. I ripped like that thing for days. Filthy dude. fucking addict. Yeah. Can't help it, dude. Yeah. I'm trying to find that balance. Cause like my big problem with comedy, mm-hmm. not with comedy, with life is that I would always, if I was doing jujitsu, I was all jujitsu. I have to train mm-hmm. twice a day. I'm waking up at five. I'm meditating. I'm eating clean, but I'm not creating shit. And then if I'm doing comedy, I'm not doing jujitsu and I'm being a fucking delinquent. I'm sleeping around and I'm drinking and whatever. Yeah. And now I'm trying to find this like, because the old version of me would have had the week I had, which by the way, was one of the most like successful weeks of my fucking career. And I would have been like, Oh, I'm smoking and drinking. Like I can't do comedy or I have to completely cut it out. And so what I'm trying to figure out now, or I stop doing jujitsu and I just go until I crash and burn. So yeah. I'm trying to figure out like, Hey, can you just have two drinks at a show and then go train the next day? And like, everything's great. Like, do I need to go extreme, um, abstinent? You were a sober guy for a while, right? Or yeah, but I mainly, it's mainly because, um, 
<laughs> it's mainly because I lost my family. No, it's mainly because I have addiction. I have addiction in my family, uh-huh. and so anytime I found myself drinking, like I hate being drunk. I hate when it creeps up on me. I I I've, I've never gotten like blackout. It was just I was doing it consistently enough that because I grew up with addiction, I just go, "Do I have a problem?" And it's like mm, I have an addictive personality. That's why I mean I do the same thing with yeah. comedy, but like I don't. I don't like alcohol enough. Well, I must say, like, when I when I first met you, you weren't drinking. Yeah. And then you were. And you weren't... It wasn't like you fell off a cliff. And you no. were just, like, all fucked up at the creek in the cave. Like, no. It was like I saw you at the creek and you were having, like, a couple of Bud Lights and a cigarette. And I was like, all right. He seemed, like, fine. I was, like, guy. pretty happy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we're <laughs> yeah. getting back into it. Yeah. And, yeah. No, and it's been really fun. And But the the tricky part, it is interesting watching, you know... 18 year old you come back out where I start to say things like all right well before every show that's been a killer like Mm -hmm. before that like Vulcan show before like I'm like well I've had a tequila so I guess I have to have a tequila and it's like no you don't like I don't I don't ever want it to be because you remember when you started comedy you're like okay uh like a cup of coffee in the afternoon and then I'll have one cigarette and then if I have a shot no 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 not a shot if I have a beer before stage and a shot while you know 15 minutes in like that's the thing it's like no the thing is be a good comic be funny be 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 consistent and it's fine but it is interesting watching 40 year old me start to like play those things again yeah. where it's like the one kind of like piss poor show I've had in two weeks was the one I like didn't drink. And I'm like, well, it's naturally, it's the tequila that's doing it. And it's like, mm, it's probably me. Yeah. It's dude. It's so hard to like come off of it and stop for me. Cause I, I, I stopped for a month. I didn't drink for a month Yeah, and it took two weeks to get adjusted. After two weeks I was good. Fine. I was cruising. I was crushing again, but Dude, the fucking creek hit me up. It was like, you want to host the showcase? Like yeah. three days into me not drinking. And I went there and just bombed my fucking dick off. It dude. was the show I saw you at that I wasn't happy with. That was the one I was trying not to drink that you also were not happy with. But we did different shows. Yes. The last time I saw you. No, um, no, this was like a month was, and a no, half. No, 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 no. Well, I'm mine. Uh, okay. I, I was saying that was my shitty one. So the yeah. hosting was your shitty one. Hosting was brutal, yeah. dude. I mean, dude, I just bombed like yeah. i went up there and i was just a little nervous and a little tense and yep. dude i like to just go into it and just be like i'm the fucking man yeah like if I, if I that's what i've been the building yep. and i have the i'm the man ener- energy yep. we're fucking good yep. but i'm not the guy that can do stand-up with the you know i feel like it just like I, that, I, well that doesn't work it no. doesn't fucking work and that happened to me that, that happened to me and so i do wonder it's like i mean the answer is probably both things the tequila probably gave me the i'm the fucking man push that I needed but also you do it long enough without it and you can harness and it's probably healthier to harness the I am the man without some kind of like substance thing because same deal like the night I saw you the other day was my shittiest show since I've been back Mm -hmm. and um, and you know, the audience fucking sucked and the, the host who was very funny, like he bombed. So I'm, I'm trying to also go easy on myself where I'm like, buddy, it was a Monday night fucking showcase set. But, um, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh dude. Now I remember. Cause yeah, I, I yeah, had yeah. done the last, the, there's a new news show at the Creek in the cave and I went in just bombed yeah. horrifically. Yeah, have yeah. you done that one yet? No, it's uh Jack Timmons and Cody, right? It's yeah, Cody. Yeah, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's new. They're, they're getting yeah. it started and I, I just like, I didn't really, I love that you didn't know what I was talking about. Cause you clearly tried to black out that night. Yeah. Like you just <laughs> fucking trauma, like washed it. Um, it was but, one of the most horrific sets I've ever had where I was just like, I, I wrote a whole six minute thing about Elon Musk. And I was like, this is going to absolutely murder. Yeah. And then, but they had a podium up there for Dean. Yeah. And then I was trying to do conversation with them from the podium about Elon Musk. And everyone was like, what the fuck? So yeah. So doing? for anyone listening from what I gather, you have to do it's a bit like the whole thing is as a news show. So like, you're not just yeah. doing, Hey, I'm going to do six minutes of topical comedy. It's like, what's your bit? Are you the weather guy? Are you the sports guy? And then you're going to do sports jokes. I have a bit idea for that show that is either so funny or it is going to bomb harder than anything is bombed on that show yeah. where I want to, I, I want them to like, totally give my credits which i never do like all the comedy credits like fucking robin williams favorite comic like just funny 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 yeah. and then i only want to read real headlines with no take just tragic <laughs> fucking headlines <laughs> and so i thought so i'll do the first one like you know whatever like some w- woman was arrested for miscarriage and then silent and then i want them just to be like oh you can have a take on it i'm like oh sorry 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 
terrible, terrible. And then just read the next one. And I just want them to get progressively worse and just stick with the bit. Like no punchlines, wow. just fucking, yeah, just worse and worse and worse. And then just thank you. Good night. <laughs> I'm hyped about it. I think it could be, I think you it, could crush it. I think it could be very funny, yeah, there's um, something there for but sure. I can't break character and they have to keep pushing me just to be like, this is terrible. And you I'm like, I know lean, world lean events are hard. The, <laughs> lean into the bomb. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, dude, I, I have a tough time leaning into the bomb because at some point I just want to be like, hey, it's cool. I'm actually, I know what I'm doing at, at this I and I, I, I don't think I could ride well, that Well, see, that's so much easier for me than bombing. I think that's why comics will turn on the audience sometimes because you're just kind of like, oh, if I'm going to bomb, I at least want this to seem like, it's like the I'm not, you're not breaking up with me, I'm breaking up with you. Yeah. It's like, well, fuck you, I hate you anyway. Um, it's that. But <laughs> if it's a bit where I know I'm purposefully bombing, then I'm fine with it. Mm. Like there is a show at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival where the goal is to walk the audience. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, I followed, like, Rick Shapiro, who's, like, putting, like, money in his ass and all this stuff. And every comic did such offensive things mm -hmm. that I was like, I'm not going to walk the audience by just being offensive. Yeah. So... I if you want to walk the audience, by the way, just just, just come to any of my headlining shows. No. The There's only about 15 people to no. walk the show. <laughs> no, you're very funny. Uh, but I staged a fight with the bartender. Mm. I go, uh, we figured out a way to stage a fight. And so I, I did a joke that was supposed to be just offensive, quote unquote. And it was like something like retarded. Mm. And he just goes, and the plan was he just goes, hey, my sister has fucking Down syndrome. And I was like, take a fucking joke, like blah, blah, blah. And we just seriously, like just we're like just someone that like hey man this is your fight you know you, you're being fucking unprofessional just work behind the fucking bar i don't give a shit about your retard sister whatever yeah and he, <laughs> and, he, and he charged the stage and we started throwing and people got scared and people like technically walked out because That's they went awesome. to go get help or they whatever and we i th i don't think we told people at the show i think i just left because people were coming up to me and they're like no i saw you get <laughs> fucking attacked and shit like that and yeah and me and him were just like boy like we that so bonded how do you us fake the whole summer. fight because like you're you could actually like if you wanted to you could probably like dislocate my shoulder right yeah, now, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah, you yeah, could yeah. fuck me up uh, you're yeah. a black belt in bjj uh brown belt but i've been doing it for like 20 years that's insane yeah yeah so yeah. you could fucking brawl yeah 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 yeah, that's why I made Damn. that. That's why I made that fucking joke video the other day mm -hmm. uh, about Chappelle and Chris Rock being attacked. I was just like, "Hey, they don't need the press. I do." I was like, if "Someone attack me! I'll jujitsu it. It'll go viral. I will finally be famous in a up. good way." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So attack me, you idiots. Um, yeah, yeah, anybody who knows, they're not gonna like, dude. Like, if they attacked Rogan, he's got so much security that he would they would stop him. But it would yeah. be entertaining to see Rogan disarm like, somebody, throw down, yeah. Cause he can still, he's like what, 55 and he can still beat the fuck out of somebody. He's fucking, he's ripped. He's a little fucking powerhouse. Yeah. That, yeah. Those roids work good. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. Hey, hey, I gotta, I gotta get booked at his club. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> healthy, legal TRT. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, I know he's not a Royce, but the fucking that TRT. I'm trying to get my dad on. I'm like, Dad, you're you? like Rogan. Don't you? <laughs> like, somebody, yeah. How many fucking comics kids are like telling that to their dad? Hey, you, you all look like Rogan, or you all look like Bert. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're like, but Bert's so nice. I'm like, I know that, but who do you want to look like? <laughs> Bert is so nice. Uh, I feel like we were talking about something besides the walking. Oh yeah, but like actual bombing, like just the sound of a crowd's indifference mm. is where I'm just like, ugh. I, that's how I felt on Monday where I was just like, man, like it, it, it was wild because I was trying new stuff and then I was like, oh, I'll just do a joke that fucking has been knocking out of the, like has been getting literal screaming applause breaks all week yeah. and just hearing that tank, you just mm. go, oh, was it all was it a just lie? a bad crowd? Were they yeah, yeah, yeah. having just, a tough time? It was just a bad crowd. Um, and, and it's not even something that I would have remembered if I didn't talk, but it, it is wild how you will be so confident and feeling so, oh, that's why I brought it up because I was fucking sober um, and feeling so good. And then you get one set like that and you just assume all the good ones were a lie instead of 100%. just, oh, that one was bad. Because also sober me, I was judging them too. Yeah. I was backstage listening to them not laugh at the host's good stuff. And I was just like, he's fucking. Who's the host, Dave J? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, he's yeah, doing yeah. Well. He was doing great. Time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and the audience was just like, pfft, just shitty. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing worse than that. Just they completely disengaged. Why the fuck are you guys here? It's a it's a tough draw to convince the audience, hey, come out on Monday night. Yeah. Be in a good mood. 
I like. I want to interview the people that come to the like the creek on a Monday. That would be, be like, fascinating. What are you guys doing? Like, what led you to this mistake? Maybe they're like fucking wait staff people, right? Where Monday's the day off. Like that's like your Saturday, dude. I so think you, it, this city's weird like that. Like on the people that you see on like a Thursday night, like they have. They, it could be Saturday for them. They have no idea. I don't think the calendar matters here. Yeah, mm. I really don't. Yeah, like Tuesday night at Latchkey is the craziest night. Well, I, I, I've had some of my favorite fucking shows ever at uh recently at the creek and at vulcan and like yeah Good week um no maybe it was weekend shows mm. actually but i've done some midweek ones at the creek that i fucking loved i forget when yeah, i just did dean's last night it was fucking awesome dude dean's is a blast yeah it's yeah great. that was the one we did together right yeah but, I, I want to say one thing uh dude i so i followed you and as first of all when i got on the stage they yeah. were still laughing at you you fucking murdered oh thanks bud. but dude i was in the little vestibule to get on yeah and so an audience member storms in like shoves the door open hits me i'm about to get on stage and just i thought he was about to fight you like i thought you said something that intimidated yeah, me he's like hey, yeah. hey you come to the bar with me right now i'm gonna get you a drink and he just pulls jamie out i'm <laughs> yeah. like what the fuck's going on fuck yeah so like my shoulders hurt and i'm on stage i'm following jamie kills it was a hell of a night though that is i would have hated me so much like what a <laughs> shitty that that's like a bad sitcom <laughs> where it's like the the you know the, the it's following you like right. all right i gotta go up next and fucking door slams dude, open and hits it. you <laughs> you fucking nailed me dude. oh my god jesus christ it was, it was good it was that's good. pretty fucking wild though yeah yeah when those I, the the boldness to just charge into the green room to buy drinks hey he's a fucking <laughs> he's a vet he fought for this country or uh all the ptsd has just <laughs> he forgot about laws and rules uh it's so kicking it's kicking down doors it's dude. one of those but you know i'm gonna be asking for your help uh once you connect with jay leno this week so we're good oh yeah dude i got you that's got a bit you. i'm very excited about that <laughs> dude but uh i wanted so how are you guys faring right now with the uh, just sort of the world crumbling around us? Because I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, not, but like I've not been paying attention. The, the, the market stuff. just ate shit. Like yeah. the entire stock, like it looks like we're going into a recession. Yep. The, after yeah. the, Something like, about like baby, baby formula is up after abortions became illegal. Like it's just, <laughs> it's fucking chaos right yeah, now. Yeah, it's, it's an absolute shit show. I, you fucking with you at all? You feel all right? No, I feel good. Um, the only thing I do feel bad about is I need to say that <laughs> this is how little concerned I am. You're mm -hmm. Bringing up a recession, and all I could think about is telling your audience that Jay Leno thing was a callback to an off-air conversation <laughs> me and him were having, <laughs> and it was very funny. It wasn't me trying to. So just I didn't even have any idea what you guys were talking. Nobody about. did. I, yeah, you missed it. You I missed certainly it. thought you would fill them in, and then you left me hanging out to dry. That was you slamming a door back and fucking <laughs> my face to get me back. Um, so yeah, well, I don't give a. Sh well, I get torn sometimes. So my comedy career has always been making the wrong decision but authentically but making the wrong decision so mm -hmm. when i started um you know it was after 9 11 i was in new york i was talking about politics i was, yeah, I was gonna I, ask where you, were you in new york the I was whole in, career yeah, pretty much yeah, yeah, yeah. When, and, when did you leave uh after my divorce and like life fell apart so like uh i don't know like eight years ago i'm bad with okay. like dates or the years but like eight or ten years ago um and so the yeah so i was like anti-war post 9 11 not mm -hmm. smart so then i started making a living overseas got discovered technically overseas where were you at um like london um i was doing the edinburgh fringe festival a lot like i got conan from the edinburgh fringe festival wow. from like an hour show i did when the booker wasn't even like employed at conan he like mm -hmm. just left aspen the aspen comedy festival shut down and then um australia a lot too and so then uh then i get conan and it's under obama so everyone's happy and then I decided to fucking talk about like drone strikes under Obama. And so, oh, no. so that, I mean, the audience, when you watch the set, it went well and it was wild. It was like the only comedy set, like Glenn Greenwald and like the, you know, right before he found like Edward Snowden, like he was posting about it and political people were, but it was the most complaints they got. Like, I, really? I, I think I almost got that booker fucking fired. And then <laughs> Trump becomes president. Finally, it's profitable to talk about politics. And I started talking about like relationships for the first time in my fucking career because that's all I care about. Mm -hmm. And so to answer your question, um, I'm at a point right now where like, I am just trying to reset myself and just get my mental health in order. I mm -hmm. think that the, you know, old political Jamie who wanted to be Stan Hope and Hicks, mm -hmm. who I probably, at some point, there is probably an interview with me 
under the Bush administration. That's like, if you're not talking about the war, you're a fucking hack. If you're talking about relationships <laughs> and now I'm talking about dating and porn. And I think it's the edgiest shit I've ever done because well, dude, you've got some great bits like about like the Amber alert bit you've got, I think it's oh, that's fire. brand that's, new. That's, that's oh, so I, good. I, I, so I, I want to fucking grow that bit too. But like, I'm trying, it's just the stuff I'm, I'm going through. Like I want to write more about like mental health stuff that I'm going through. And like, mm -hmm. I want to write about like the yeah, fucking affair I had, like, and to me, that's edgy right now, but it's, it, it, I've never gone the the profitable route. Like when it was popular to talk about politics, I didn't do it. When And not because I'm trying to be difficult. It's just I can't force myself to write. Like, anything I, other than what you actually want to talk about. Trump's orange, like I just, I, I, I didn't care. So right now, I know my podcast would get bigger numbers if I was political. And, you know, there's certain stuff I'll talk about, but I just... I'm just focusing on just like making this sounds so lame, but like making myself a better person and a better comic. Mm -hmm. And it just doesn't help me. But at the same time, I think about old me that would have been like, that's fucking apathetic. You need to like, you know, fight what's going on. You need to, but like, what am I going to do so when I read about though, like, like gas? I've got that guy in my yeah. head too. That's just like, Oh, you need to be talking about this type of shit. Right. It was like when COVID was happening, I was like, okay, when I get back into it, like I need to have some stuff to talk about about what just happened to the country. Yes. And then I tried doing it and I was like, this is just so not me. Yeah. Like, if, if, like, if, if this it's is forced, fucking ass, 100%. why am I doing this? Cause I was doing bits about just, I don't know, like uh, during the pandemic and I was just like, just shut the fuck no. up, Joe. Like uh, just yeah. fucking keep If moving. it's authentic, anytime you find yourself being like, oh, I guess I got to have a gas price joke or I guess I got to have a whatever. If it's authentic, you know, I ended up, Again, the old me would have made myself write a preachy abortion mm -hmm. joke, you know, and I didn't, but I, I'm writing this joke about getting my first STD in Texas and this girl. Did uh, that actually happen? Yeah. Which one did you get? Uh, well, so <laughs> I don't want to do the bit, but the story is kind of the bit. So first of all, 40 years, reckless sex, never had an STD, a week in Texas, chlamydia. Oh my <laughs> like, God. A fucking week. And then, but the funny part was. You're going to get one though. Okay, so that's You're what the get one. That's what everyone says, and my doctor and and I was so paranoid because I'm, it, my generation grew up just like, mm -hmm. ever you were so scared of STDs. So and now like I mean anytime I fuck a girl in her twenties, like if I even bring up a condom, they look at me like what you fucking cop yeah. like. <laughs> and, uh, and so the uh, I remember I was surprised when the because chlamydia like the word sounds so like huh. And so when the doctor was like uh, the doctor was like don't worry that's the easy one. I'm like that sounds like talk from someone who's had chlamydia yeah. a lot. And like so then but then the, w one of the jokes is I and this is also true. I took the fucking pill. It didn't go away. So I had to do a second dosage. And I was like Texas gave me the Delta variant of chlamydia. Like it was so. <laughs> wild so then what happened was um i slept with this girl i slept with this girl last week and you still had a little chlamydia no 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 no, no. that's been gone for too. a while yeah, yeah. <laughs> guys i'm confessing i i've pretty much been giving all uh, uh females in austin chlamydia no mm -hmm. what happened was uh she whispered uh while we're having sex uh she goes i have an iud and in my head, it's still an acronym. Like I wasn't really, cause again, we called it birth control. So, and uh, so I heard that and like, I fucking panicked. And so the, the, the line I said was like, I would rather you whisper no acronyms, no. Uh, especially one that's like two letters, two out of three is like STD. Like it's, it, it's an I It's like the other one could be you have chlamydia. And then the, uh, I was like, I would rather you say my, my body kills babies. And then the line I said was, I would rather you say in bed, uh, my body is a baby killing machine that not even the Supreme court could stop. And then that got a good laugh. Oh, the first night I did it was at that vet show. Yeah. And, um, and that was just a way where I'm like, I didn't try to do an abortion joke. There's no stance on it. I'm writing this joke about a serious thing that like is embarrassing to me and actually did happen. Yeah. And then when I said baby killing machine, I go, fuck, yes, cool. I can tag it with something that also happens to be. And I think it was like the day after uh, the ruling came down. And so it's not an abortion joke, but it wasn't fucking forced. And again, the old me would have been like, okay, I have to do this like pro-choice. I have to like, we gotta get, uh, all we right, gotta let's get the clap angle. for all the ladies. The like, yeah. And it, if it's not authentic, then I'm like, I don't want to do it. And someone will do it authentically. Some fucking, well, some Burr, Burr will take it. Burr, like, Burr will take, not, yeah. Like, dude, they, the best comics, I don't know. I think just like, I, I think Burr really doesn't give a fuck who he upsets. But it's like, it's, it, that sounds almost cliche. 
but what what am I trying to say? I think what I'm trying to say is like Burr's not Burr's not afraid to like slap the left wing or the right wing in the yeah. face. It's whatever direction the bit's gonna go. He's cool with it, hundred percent, and that's just amazing. And you know, one of the things that I mean to go off that mm-hmm. is I forgot like the language of comedy. Like I was so in this political lefty world for so long that just being around comics who for the most part much like me are like fucking super liberal open-minded mm-hmm. whatever you know there's been this whole like the left versus comedy fighting and then you talk to these comics and you meet the audience and you go oh you guys are actually fucking way more diverse than the 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 when I when I used to go out for drinks with like the nation writers and it was all white people yeah. and <laughs> they're they're more diverse and they'll joke about it and they'll talk about their fuck ups as well and it is just so on and and you know that you meet the most offensive comics and they're the fucking sweetest yeah. dudes in the world like, like we've both opened for stan, stan Hope. he's Hope, the fucking the, man i shared a bed with him because i was poor and didn't have a place to what? stay and he was just because he's a fucking old road guy so he wasn't just stay on my floor he's like i just use half the bed just stay and fucking stay and, <laughs> and, <laughs> stay and, and by slept the way in a bed with I, doug stan I, I, I was new enough <laughs> that wild. i was just like oh i guess this is the due paying they talk about <laughs> and like yeah we just fucking shared a bed and then got up and wrote the next morning and had breakfast and like um the sweetest guys, Luis J. Gomez, the sweetest fucking guy. Um, you know, these, these these people who, again, my old friends would have just assumed it was like an audience of Nazis going to see them. It's like, no, it's comedy fans. And it's been so freeing for me mm-hmm. in my real life, just being like, oh, I can just make these fucking jokes, these offensive jokes to make myself laugh, to make, you know, my friends laugh, and then still be... And then with my actions, still be like a kind, you know, whatever. Yeah, 100%. Um, but, and, and through comedy, you're allowed to talk about your fucking flaws openly instead of, again, old me, old like holding it all in until it fucking explodes. Well, yeah, you were, you were saying this in the elevator on the way up here that like if push came to shove, right? Like it's not Twitter. Somebody is actually being homophobic. Like somebody's actually tr- attempting to assault yeah. a gay man. Yep. Out at a bar. Yep. It's these these Twitter fuckers yeah. that we all know yep. are, are probably not going to do anything, but a Louis J. Gomez type might will, would, would throw hands. Will throw hands. As would you. 100%. Yeah. I, I escorted my last day in LA. I went to a pro wrestling thing, mm-hmm. and this dude screamed out, faggot, to a gay wrestler, and I escorted him out to the point where he thought he worked there. Oh, like, I worked there. Yeah. I just, like, grabbed him by the shoulder, and I go, hey, we don't say that anymore, and then I walked him out. Uh, and, but at the same time, if I'm with a friend, uh-huh. uh, I'll call a fucking street like gay, because that's very funny. Yeah. Uh, I will never <laughs> call a gay person gay, uh, or I'll never call him a fag. You know what I mean? But, yeah. like, this dude was shouting that at a fucking gay pro wrestler and i was like oh yeah we're leaving yeah you're getting and then out. i just escorted him out no doubt i did it very nicely but like yeah i escorted him out of the building it's a good way to do it yeah it was a great way <laughs> i mean yeah it's like uh it's it's fun to fucking night it up every once in a while and just like be the actual one that steps in i, I love did, doing I, it, it i feels, did i did feel very good it about myself good. it feels yeah. fucking great when you're that guy yeah, yeah i asked the guy to leave a bar the other night and that was it was a fucking nice you're still thing. riding it aren't you i was like Fuck yeah. yeah. You two are what? just out here performing citizen's arrest. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean, dude, this guy had like. <laughs> Me, within, this is the first time Joe and I have hung out. We want to start already within a half an hour. We've talked about starting a band, starting a, like, some comedy show. And then also now I want to be vigilante. Yeah. Yes, and let's and do it. Dude, let's, let's dress up and go out on the town. Yeah. yeah dude, yeah. but it's, it's funny because sometimes you meet these people where it was like, I, I, White knighted this guy. Yeah, where we were at a bar. By the we, way, we made these. You don't even need white to be. White knighting is a good thing. Yes, you I don't. Use it you, as a you don't even need to be like self deprecating about it. Like you did yeah. something that should be done. Okay, I did a good thing. Yes, I was at a bar. I was with my ex girlfriend. Yeah, there was a couple couples that we made friends with, and there was this girl that was with this guy, and like I sort of realized that they weren't together at this one point. And I'm like, what's the deal with that guy? And she goes, like, he's been following me for like four bars, and Whoa. so like. They were talking. They're just like, yeah, we can't really get rid of this guy. And they were like, okay. And then so one of the girls was like, basically just like, fuck you. You should leave. And then he wouldn't go. And then I was like, hey, dude, you just, you got to, yeah. you got to go. Yeah. And he's like, oh, well, okay. And I go, you got to fucking go. And he goes, okay. And he walks out and then he walks back and he goes, I just want to like say bye to her. And I go, oh my God. I go, 
I will fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just like literally yeah. turned where I was like, My words I'm going like, to yeah. fucking like break your fucking neck. Because he was a little dude. If he was a giant dude, I probably wouldn't have said this. You're like, I'm like, going to let you say bye to my I'm, friend. I'm going <laughs> to fuck you up. So I was just like, you either leave right now. Or I'm, I'm going to fuck you up. And so he left. Long story short, I've got a friend that works at Brew and Brew over there. And we saw him the same guy when we were walking into a bar and she's like, oh my God, I've had so many problems with that guy. Whoa. Like he like comes into brew and brew and he like rubs my back and shit. Jesus Christ. And I'm like, is he mentally ill or is he just a creep? Well, dude, so this is the thing. He's got one of those mentalities. I had met him earlier that day. We went to breakfast at Cisco's and I was just drinking mimosas, yeah. hanging out. Sure. Like I literally went by myself and I was drinking mimosas and just talking to whoever was at the bar. And so this guy's sitting next to me and he's like, dude, I went out last night. I did a bunch of ecstasy. I was up all night and I was, there was this girl that was with me and she's like, I want to fuck. And then at like 4 a.m. She just like ran for the door and it was like super weird. That and is then, not a funny antidote. Yeah. Yeah. And then, <laughs> you know, about, you know how chicks always be running to the door. <laughs> dude, and so he goes, yeah, she's crazy. And I'm like, it sounds a little weird, but you know, maybe she just decided she wasn't into it and couldn't say goodbye. And then I go, oh my God, this guy's like a serial uh, creep. He kidnapped her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, yeah. Um, Jesus. he lives in the building across the street, so I think we should just like fuck, just fuck, him, fuck him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. How we're, do you handle that? We're though? gonna stalk the stalker. Like yeah. we're gonna be the creeps following him, hoping he follows the girl, so that we can fuck him, so we can assault him essentially. Yeah. Dude, so we're both would, doing just, the same thing as a podcast that would kill amongst women. You know how they love like the murder podcast? Yeah. You're oh, stalking yeah. a stalker, dude. Yeah. Jamie and Joe stalk, stalk. I'll uh, take care of the stalking, uh, uh, and Jamie can take care of the ass. No, maybe uh, is, uh, I'll do the fight. Maybe we put pen to paper on this. Yeah. <laughs> it's all yeah, I mean, I'll, it, look, I have plenty of ideas. I never have someone who will fucking like film it. So if we have a producer for this project, I am I like is. all my projects. I am, that is the fucking problem. Oh, we talked about this. Um, cause I talked to Adam about this too. Excitement in comedy and no action. Yes. Yeah. Well, and with everything, I mean, I was the dude, the reason I'm a comic is because I, I was in a band in high school and I thought the band was going to take off. And then they were all like, we have to go to college. And I was like, what? Yeah, you could actually play, by the way. Like, oh, every, everybody comes in and is just like, oh, yeah, I can play. And just we'll pick it up. And then you're fucking shredding. I'm like, oh, okay, bad. shit, Jamie plays. Thanks, dude. Yeah, you too. When you picked up the guitar, I was just like, uh-oh. And I was like, like yeah, we, fuck, we should fuck really hard, dude. We should do it. Um, <laughs> Find me a girl like Joe. That's yes, all I want. How you doing? Yeah. But, dude, you would love this building because it's kind of wild. The dude downstairs, two floors down, used to, he toured with Spoon for two summers. And yep. then the other guy down the hall has an electric drums kit and he fucking shreds. Ugh. He's been playing for like 20 years. So we'll just hang out. It's great. That it's like rules. Dude, for years, I've just been trying to make friends that play music and yep. none of my friends play music. Same. And I end up being the guy that's just like hammered at 2am being like, you guys want to hear some songs? Yeah. You're like, shut up, <laughs> <laughs> shut up, pussy. <laughs> and so, Oh, you know why? Cause I was like, why we we're artists. Why don't our friends play music? And it's mm -hmm. because people get into comedy because they couldn't do music. And yes. so they either, and then they'll sometimes resent it. Like when I see like a good looking comic, like when I first saw you, I was just like, man, this is fucking garbage. Um, <laughs> and let, let alone, it's like, oh yeah, he plays guitar. It's just like, yeah, fucking you pussy. What I'm going to project all my, all my shit on you. Yeah. Dude, I do get a lot of those projections. I yeah. I think a lot of like, dude, everyone's been really nice to me in Austin. Yeah. But in other previous experiences, when I have showed up at a new scene, I have yeah. not historically. Been <laughs> that's so because everyone's just like so weak. Well, yeah. dude, people just think that I'm the guy that's gonna fuck their girlfriend, and I am. Right. But, <laughs> but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna escort you out of the bar, and then I'm gonna fuck your girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. That's so. God, I have so many thoughts on that. Because, yeah, I probably thought that, too. I mean, I don't... I'm like, how can you use this as an example without, like... Uh, what Chris D'Elia did was not good. Um, mm -hmm. But it was so interesting how people were just frothing to pounce on that. Where they were like, thank God, the hot one was taken down. Yeah. And, like... Um, and I've even, I've done that, you know, as I've sort of been, like, working on myself and... Mm -hmm trying to be more confident and comedy is going better and I'm just fucking training every day. Like, so I had this. Yeah, so you said you were in deep in like the left wing cancel culture. Thing, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, like, yeah, so yeah. what was, what was, how did you get sucked into that? Like, how does, how does mm, that happen? I mean, I was really liberal Yeah. in like what I think is a good way. Like I was not for the fucking war in Iraq, which was an unjust war. I mm. 
think gay people should be able to do whatever the fuck they want. I mean, those were the two issues back in the day. And then, that's wild that it's transitioned that much. It's, where it's right. just like every, just about everybody's. The on big board. lefty thing it was just like end the war in Iraq, let gay people marry. Like, like even Trump was just like, dude, the war in Iraq was really stupid. Yeah, everybody, and everybody was like, whoa, yeah. okay. Well, like, and, to me, and to me, it was like, that was a pro-troop stance. I told those vets, because uh, I was talking to them about it, mm -hmm. where I'm like, to me, me being anti-war back then wasn't even anti-troop. It was, uh, it's a pro-troop stance because I'm like, I don't want you to die for bullshit. Yeah. Like, if you're going to go over there, right, don't have it be the fucking prophet like Dick Cheney, right? Yeah. And so... And then just as I felt like I was failing in comedy, I was getting more of a, a lefty audience and less of a comedy audience. Because in the beginning, it was a lefty comedy audience where, again, you could be like, the war in Iraq's gay. Like, you could be, yeah. a, you could be <laughs> offensive towards, like, woke people or whatever, but also be liberal. And they were like, yay. And then it just... The war in Iraq is gay. Yeah. That's, 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 my, that's the soundbite. Um, a dated war and a dated term. And, yeah, and here we go. Um, the And so... That my audience just, like, I didn't even know what happened to me. It's just suddenly I'm hanging out and I'm doing more MSNBC panel shows than I'm being asked to do stand-up. I have more fans who will write into the podcast to, like, complain about language than I do, you know, mm. comedy fans. I'm not getting comedy gigs, but I'm getting asked to do this college. And then there's... Um, the fact that I'm this super self-hating and I, even though I was doing these like panel shows with like literal like Nobel Prize nominees and shit, mm -hmm. I always felt like an imposter. I felt like my ex was the smart one. I felt like I was just a dick joke guy. I dropped out of high school to fucking be in that band. And, um, and so if people were just like, hey, that's fucking offensive. You're a white guy. You can't. I would just kind of go, oh, okay. And yeah. then it just got ahead. And like it just. It, yeah, it just. It once just you fucking, take it once, you it just, just keep taking it, just it over and over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I feel like, and you know, this is what a lot of my friends would always tell me. Like one of my mentors, this guy, Paul Provenza. Um, the best. He, the best. Yeah, and he's fucking cool. He's the best. And he would always be like, make comedy your language comedy is your language comedy is your political beliefs comedy he did this mm. thing um after this breakup that me and you were talking about the other night and i was just like man i gotta like get the fuck out of here and he goes dude every time you have a fucking breakup you or something bad happens to you you run away from comedy when that is the time to run towards comedy that yeah. is the time to be a fucking artist and i totally realized that i realized that for so long anytime i would have any failure i would just go i fucking knew it i guess i just quit yeah. And then I would just fucking quit or whatever. No, I, dude, I, I mean, we're both went through a breakup pretty much at the exact same time. Yeah. Like almost like to the day. Yeah. So yeah, I feel that like, and it's, it's kind of like, what's the sad version of Eskimo brothers? Yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> what's the breakup? Yeah, we're just of sitting that? at the bar at the Creek being like, yeah. And we were both, and well, and that's when I really knew I liked you. By the way, yeah. is when we were I both like you too, Jamie. We, when we were both just like we weren't like all oh, these fucking bitches. We were like, man, I was crying a lot. Like it, <laughs> it was so hard. Um, oh, but so back to this like judgy of handsome thing. So I so um, my last girlfriend, uh, I felt myself because I wasn't throwing myself into comedy, and so I was being kind of like. I felt myself thinking these like kind of gross insecure thoughts. And then I had even a weirder moment mm -hmm. the other day. I walk into this new uh, building that I'm moving into and there's a dude who just, yeah, like the most handsome, like a foot taller than me, whatever. And I noticed that my intuition was to judge the dude. Mm -hmm. And then he came up to me. He was like, bro, I saw you at fucking Vulcan. Like you, you killed it. Like you live <laughs> here now, like whatever. And I realized that so many of the times that I've judged these like bigger dudes or taller dudes or whatever, it's just because I've fucking hated myself and I've hated myself. And so I go, I don't belong. You yeah. know, it's like, if you see a group of like hot girls, it's like, oh, you just kind of assume they won't like you. So it's like, I'm going to make fun of them or whatever. Yeah, You assume they're all assholes. That's what it is. And so I, and think, a lot of times they are, well, but a hundred percent, but I think it's, yeah, you fucking, we, we had to earn our anyway. Uh, yeah. so, but like I, uh, but I think it's the same with like judging you or whatever, where the more I throw myself into comedy and jujitsu, the more I go, oh, I'm actually really good at things or like, oh, I could get one of those girls or I have or like, why am I judging this dude? If he's a fucking cool dude, like, why can't I also hang out with like 
good looking tall dudes and not just like my fucking mutant. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. when I hang out with fighters, it's like I, I, I don't feel like I don't belong. I'm like, we're all but man, that imposter syndrome hits so fucking hard. Um oh, that, that yeah, it's and, and you know, anytime someone gives you shit, it's like, oh, it's it's their shit. Yeah, it's coming from somewhere else. A hundred percent. Dude, I mean, yeah, people have just like basically I don't want to say they went at me, but there's always like everywhere I've been there is a specific like coalition of people that just like does not want to book me and work with me. And it's just like, this fucking sucks, but it's yeah. always, but like you said, it's never the, the fucked up dirty guys. Like people like Adam lucky, like Adam lucky was just like immediately. She's like, Oh, you're my guy. You're in same. You're, yeah. you're in. He's the best. And you're like, okay. Um, anything I got to do to earn. He's like, Nope, yeah. just, you did well in one show. Well, to you're be fair, forever. I mean, Adam's, very attractive. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, he's the fucking best. He's, and, and Matt, Matt laughed too hard at he, that. He's, <laughs> he's one of the funniest people on the planet. <laughs> and that's why he can, he doesn't have the ego. Yeah. There, you know, the people who have helped me the most have been the most wildly famous. And the people who have shit on me the most, you know, uh, have been garbage. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been thinking about this. I think like the difference between like cockiness and confidence is like, confidence doesn't need validation and cockiness does it's like yes, you're sort of like relying yeah, yeah, on yeah. other shit whereas like if you're actually confident you can go without the, the stimulus for a little bit and be completely fine and that's why i said like own the thing about walking the guy out of the bar where it's like we we have been trained not just as comics i mean comics it's this extra layer of hell because you're self-deprecating and whatever mm -hmm. and, and and we uh, profit off of it you know what i mean how am i supposed to do all that positive thinking stuff and love myself and whatever when i'm literally on stage being like oh, i'm a piece of shit um but the but humans in general it's like we're not nice to ourselves we're not kind to ourselves and i think some people are well a lot of like you just gotta learn to be like yeah, those motherfuckers well but a, a lot of times being around comics and stuff it's like when you are mm -hmm. you're afraid you're gonna get made fun of yeah. and yeah, cocky is the person who goes backstage and fucking just starts like name dropping, talking over you, refusing to laugh at your jokes, um, yeah. you know, all that shit. And and don't get me wrong, I, I love the Austin scene, but I have been backstage where people have done that to me until the host asks for my credits and then they hear my credits and suddenly they're like, literally like, hey bro, can you follow me on Instagram? And I'm like, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Yeah, get uh, fucked. Yeah, whereas like I met you, I met, you know, the people I've met who I didn't even know if they booked, I didn't know you had Instagram. Instagram followers like I didn't care we're just we're doing bits yeah, we're together we're having a conversation and I'm like friend that's my yeah, friend 100%. you know what I mean like the majority of the time I'm at the creek I'm not even looking who's backstage I'm with the staff yeah like because I love cool they're fuck. cool as fuck and um and so I think like you know for me I've had so many I've had untrue things said about me and fucking mm. rumors spread and things getting all I can do is show up at a club and just be the fucking best version of myself. I'm going to go up and I'm going to be funny. I'm going to be fucking nice to everyone. I'm going to be respectful to everyone. And then everyone goes, holy fuck, Kilstein's so nice. I'm like, yeah, I know. Yeah, um, yeah I've been trying to tell you guys. Yeah, but also, to like, I to me, I think that's, and anyone who thinks you're cocky when you're actually not being cocky, it's just like, no, being decent looking and funny isn't cocky. Being confident is something we should fucking all strive to do. Yeah, and again, it's a defense mechanism. Whenever you're just fucking shitting on yourself or shitting on the club or shitting on a lot of times it's like, I'm afraid I'm going to bomb. So I'm going to set this up to, you know, whatever, yeah. which is what I did the other night where I was like, oh, fuck this audience. And then I bombed and I'm like, okay, I kind of deserve that. Yeah. You got to come in with the heat. Just be like, I'm going to fuck this place up. Yep. Dude. I'm, but yeah, dude, it, it's sort of like, uh, I don't know, like a golfer walking in and just being like, you know, my shoulders kind of fucking hurting today. Yeah. Before you, go, you even oh, tee off. Oh, here like, we go. It yeah, I got, I got, a, little, I got yeah. a little stiffness. And yep. you're just like, just trying to make an excuse just yep. in case you, and you that's fucking get blown out out there. So many times. Like there have been so many times where I go to spar somebody and they're visiting, they're fucking wearing a UFC tank top and have huge cauliflowers. And I go, oh, that guy's a real fighter. Mm -hmm. And if I go and thinking that I'm gonna get killed, like, I remember a specific time that happened. And then I just go, wait, I'm a fucking real fighter, which I have trouble saying. The other day I said I wasn't an athlete. And my friend's like, you fight perfect. Like, 
Dude, they brought me in to fucking train with Alexander Volkanovsky, me and the head coach, and that was it. Who's the current UFC featherweight champion? Because mm-hmm. I'm like, oh right, I'm very, I'm very good. And were well, uh, you just like working on ground game with him or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, That's bad. Just that dude. sparring partner, and like, and it was fucking great. And like, we had fucking great rounds. And but then you know, a week ago, I was talking to my friend, and I was just like, well, I mean, I'm not like an athlete, and it's like, no. I am right. Yeah. Um, when I went to Vulcan, I caught myself again. One of the best sets I've ever had in my life. Um, but it was roast battle, and I saw the old narrative. I would have told myself, like, "What am I doing oh, this here?" Is a different panel, audience. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, I've never done panel. I've never, you know, whatever. Um, and then I just, I, 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 yeah, I harnessed exactly what you said, which is very new. Where I'm like, I'm gonna fucking murder because they had us do yeah. sets before judging, and I just, I'm gonna fucking murder this, and I murdered it. And then that gave me the confidence on panel, which I've never done, to murder that because I'm like, oh, this audience already fucking loves me. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. Giving yourself permission to, I can do whatever I want. If it works or not, you don't give a shit because you're like, oh, they already fucking love me. Um, yeah. And then the fucking pedal at the Vulcan is electric. What's that? It's electric. It's so fucking Dude. fun. So I mean, fun. it was it was one of my favorite nights in comedy, period. Yeah. Not just because of my set. I mean, Lucas was battling this girl from Chicago, and it was, I mean, some of the best comedy I've ever seen in my life. Like, I kept doing the, like, black person in church. Like, I would walk away. I, I would literally get up from the table, <laughs> walk to the bar, slap it, and, like, circle back. Nice. And, like, like, it was just, it was insane. Um, like my body, you're right, electric. Like my body would just move, and like there were a couple times I would just go to the stage and just start pounding it, like it was like a rock show. Like hell it was yeah, so fucking good. Um, yeah, man, comedy can be really fucking special when you're not. That's why it's like, why are we all such cunts? Like, let's just be nice to each other and lift each other See, up and is help it, each other. If you're gonna be fucking miserable, just go do something else because you're gonna make more money working at Target if you're miserable than doing this. It's right. like there's some people where it's just like, oh yeah, it's it's my dream. And it's like, well, every second I see you doing this, you're you're having a, a, a terrible time. Right. Like you're just like, <laughs> right. you don't seem to be enjoying being around anybody. You don't yeah. seem to be enjoying yourself on stage. And it's like, why, why like tell yourself the narrative that this is what you want to do? It's right. like, you might as well, like, this is hard enough already. Just fucking enjoy it. I did have some, fun. I did some show with people I didn't know the other day. And I texted Chris and Adam and I go, the green room is so sad without you guys. <laughs> like, this is so depressing. Yeah. Um, Cause everyone, yeah, was just like fucking miserable and just staring at their phones and um, like, yeah. Or, or yeah, or just like bitching or whatever. And again, I, I do think it's a defense mechanism, but what I always said when I was on the outs with comedy and throwing myself into jujitsu how long did you step away, by the way? I've taken so many breaks, dude. Mm. It was like the divorce stuff. I walked away for like a year. I tried to kill myself. Oh, I man. When Robin Williams was like the only person convincing me to like not quit comedy. Then he died. Then I quit again. Then Holy fucking, shit. I mean, COVID, I guess everybody quit uh, for like a year. Um, but I started making comedy videos. That's when I started Instagram was over COVID. And so I was like, oh, I like comedy. And then... Yeah, L.A., I was, like, very back and forth. I was, like, kind of teaching jiu-jitsu occasionally. I'd go on, like, Burt's podcast or, like, a big podcast. and go, I'm going to do comedy. And then I wouldn't get booked. And i go, oh, fuck comedy. You know, yeah, like, I didn't hustle like, like I'm hustling this is a good place here. for us to be, where it's, like, we can work pretty regularly. Yeah, and, and everyone's, like, time. fucking nice and, like, supportive. Um, I w- that is more important to me than... Name recognition or, I mean, even the audiences are fucking great. Because don't get me wrong, like, I went to New York and did shows with people I really look up to who have, like, huge platforms. And I was like, maybe I should move to New York. But I'm like, no, man, I would rather build something with people who I can hang with every day. And and, and, and nothing to do with Rogan or, like, what this city's becoming. Yeah. Just about the stage time and, like, our grade, you yeah. know? Because, I mean, rem- like, when I started... Like right now, I feel like me and you, I always thought of it as like grades. Mm. So when I started the seniors, it was like fucking Chappelle, Patrice, Norton, Attell. Um, That's uh, a great senior I mean, it, class. It, 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 Ger- Ger- Geraldo. Yeah. Like it was crazy. All the guys on Tough Crowd, basically. Yep. And then the, yep, yes. And that, yeah. And, it, and you guys and were it was like when the young Tough guys. Crowd was just- well, so then there was the junior class, which is now all like, the le- it was like Big J. Mm-hmm. Um, it, 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 it was. It How was long has Big J been doing this? Forever. Well, he really? was a Philly guy. He's been doing it a long time. Um, and then you know, Attell started to take Jay out on the road, and it it, it, it was a lot of those guys. Um, then the 
I was like, the freshman class was like, me and Pete Holmes were handing out flyers outside the Boston. Um, Giannis, yeah, you guys were like really new. Giannis yeah, Pappas. Giannis booked me for a show in Brooklyn. Sam Morell used to run a terrible show that he used to book me at mm-hmm. um, in like Times Square. Actually, it was a fucking great show. But I mean, like they would bark in Times Square. It was terrible for them. Um, and so that was like my, that was my grade. And I feel like me and you, like we're that kind of like, Big J Legion is like we're the junior class right now. Yeah. Um, There's the Rogan, the Seguras, and then but what's it's kind of like really cool. And I am this is why Provenza convinced me to stay. Not because of Rogan, not because of those guys. What's really cool is like there is a huge fucking drop off between the senior class and the junior. It's like the senior class, there's no junior class, and then we're the sophomore class. Pretty much. Yeah. Which means when the seniors are fucking gone, like we can rule the scene. I think we do it. While everyone's here, I no, mean, I, I think it's, no, no, it's no, going to be yes. amazing. Like, yeah. like what we need is like, basically, I think there need what I what I love about old, the new Austin scene, right? That's coming in right now is this old Austin scene complains about us and shit, but it's like we're very accepting. When you're everybody. done with this, you need to define yeah. just so I know. Oh yeah, old, old Austin is being like the people that have been here for like three, four years plus. Okay. The people that were here pre-pandemic that and have just been hanging out. Are they more on like the like alt Yeah, alt, alt okay. type scene. And they talk shit about us and they fucking hate us. Okay. And they. That was, that, that's yeah. good for me to know because I have picked my side. <laughs> so yeah, I'm like, yeah. uh, essentially I'm like, tell me who my enemies are. Yeah. So they're, well, dude, but they, they kept saying that like there's a lot of like racism in the, in the new scene and stuff and the people that are coming in and a lot of like homophobia. And it's like, dude, we're like creating opportunities for people going out of each other's way to help everybody out. It's like, right. everybody's been really fucking cool. Like uh, somebody that they street, might talk that, shit about that like, uh, street like gay joke probably didn't help yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not to, not to bring us back. Uh, uh, all those steps. Yeah. I, we're, I we're fucking huge homophobes. But like <laughs> aside from that, we got it going on. Yeah. But, but uh, Oh, okay. So, what, so, okay. So, so that's totally the old scene. I know. That's why I, uh, I get so lost in thought. But the thing is, what I want to see here is like, just have a bunch of clubs thriving where it's like Rogan's Club opens, Cap opens, yep. Creek stays open. And they we, need to fucking stay open. Yeah, and, oh, I know. They're so special. Yeah. And then we could just bounce. Yeah. Like, I mean, that to just be able to bounce from fucking, oh, I'm doing a set of Vulcan, then I'm doing a set of Creek. And then, dude, then you like, have these like independent shows, like match shows that are fucking crushing where yeah. he's like, Selling out a fucking jazz club, seventy people, and it's perfect. Put me on your show, dude. We talked about it, did we? Yeah, we did. I say yes. Well, I, well, I don't have a date yet, but uh, you did say yes. You did okay, say great. yes. Hell yeah, you did say yeah. Yes. I want to do a show, uh, and I want to do a show at a jazz club because I want to start combining like more music, comedy stuff too. Um, we'll talk. Fuck yes, oh, yeah. yeah, man. I just think it's it's so. What I'm learning, I turn 40 next week, and what I am learning in my old age, that the the answer to all of life's problems are in cliches that we've probably seen on fucking yeah, calendars. That's a good point. Where it's like you have to love yourself before you can love someone else. If you're just mm. nice and help people, they will blah, 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 blah. And like with comedy, it's literally just show up, be funny, be cool. Yeah. Just be nice to people. And like, you know, if people... So many of the ones, and I've done this, who trash talk, who whatever, it's like they just don't want to do the work or confront their own bullshit, which is why they are, you know, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm sure me and you will fucking go out for beers and we'll gossip. And we'll, but that's Oh, dude, all, I love the gossip. But I, that's have, how, I, have, I love talking shit about people. There's it's a so difference fun. between us. Especially joking. Matt. I talk so much. Oh, well, I'm an <laughs> yeah. easy target. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he said such hurtful things about you. I didn't want to be in the same room. <laughs> uh, just, I didn't know what the tension would be like. But like, I... um um, but I've always said this. It's it's like, dude, it's you got to check three boxes. If you're like funny, naturally, you work hard and you're nice. You'll probably, it seems to be like everyone that has those three figured out, you do pretty well. That's it. It's like you got to, I mean, like if you suck at basketball and you show up and you try to make it into the NBA, it doesn't matter how cool you are yeah. and how hard you work. But it's like, dude, if you've got the talent thing at least kind of figured out, yeah, like you're pretty good. And then the hard work thing's huge. I mean, yeah. that, that that's a problem with artists. If you are listening to this and strive to be one, um, that's one of the problems. Putting and, in and, any effort at all, like once well, yeah. a day. But actually like, that <laughs> ties into the negativity when you were like, that, that was a thought I didn't finish, which is you think that's part of the gimmick mm-hmm. and that you have to be negative or you have to be self-hating to be a comic and, 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 and that has, I actually think really held me back. Like, and, and, and one of the things I'm trying to do recently is 
use the confidence I have as a fighter, use the confidence I have and use that to my comedy. Like you were saying, walking in and being like, I'm going to own the place instead of being like, well, I guess I'm supposed to say this is going to suck or I'm supposed to like shit on it or I'm supposed to shit on myself. What is that? Where did that come from where people convince themselves that that works? I mean, like artists are like prone to be self-hating. And then Mm -hmm. I think, you know, a lot of the comics who have made it, well, because we shit Doug, all over Doug, Dane Doug, Cook, Doug, right? Doug like, hope and Attell would be v- disagreeing with us pretty heavy, right? Like yeah. they would be like, they're pretty. They seem to, I don't know. Like Stan Hope wrote that whole thing about the comedy classes. Oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, the one guy's just like, yeah. All you got to do is fucking like just have a positive attitude, and he's like, the best comic I know is Dave Attell, and he's got the most piss poor attitude. Right, of right, 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 right. Where he's like, he always thinks he's gonna bomb. So I think there's like a. Total other side to it, but I don't know. I, I just mean like what, what, what putting I'll ta- in any effort. Yeah, what put I'll put in any effort. What I'll tell jujitsu when, when I teach jujitsu, and both of these references have been canceled, so I need to update them. Mm-hmm. But I was like, you need um, the self criticism of Woody Allen, and then the confidence of Kanye. You know, <laughs> um, where it's like you need to be self critical without being self hating. You need like, to be what confident. Should I be banging being... this child? Right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> Ask yourself those kind of questions. <laughs> should um, I bang my stepdaughter? Should, yeah, I, yeah, should yeah. I really do it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should journal reasons why I shouldn't do it. Uh, yeah. But like you get the artist so many times because we're not the only ones who do it. There's the self hate, but there's also like the substance abuse, right? You get people yeah. who are like, I'm a writer and you're like, what have you written? They're like, well, nothing, but I'm an alcoholic like Hemingway. And you're like, mm. like yeah. you have to, actually like make the art and do the thing and like you know i've well i've been hustling after this breakup because it put me like back a bunch of steps and i'm like i need to treat this like my fucking job which means i'm trying to get booked every day and then when i'm not i'm bringing my fucking computer out and I'm writing or I'm emailing or I'm Mm -hmm. trying to get on podcasts or, you know, uh, like I want to start making sketches again or, you know, whatever it is. And that shit's hard work. And I think, you know, you meet people who are like, oh, I want to have a podcast. You're like, what's your idea? And they're like, well, I just want to like smoke weed with my friends like Joe. And you're like, that's not it. Yeah. Like you're (laughs) fucked. You just don't want a Uh job. You just don't want a job. Right. But I think if you truly love the art form, the hard work will come kind of naturally where it's like i love writing jokes i and, and then you just have to train yourself to get into a habit or to get into a pattern and it's like dude, the bare minimum and, like gets you so far like if you write 10 minutes before you go on stage like i have such a better set just yeah. off 10 minutes yeah but so many days i just go eh and then just, no, just and, go and I'm, I'm making myself you know i have i have a show tomorrow that i know it'll be a good new audience where are you going up and, tomorrow uh, whatever Lucas's show is. Oh, nice. The one at Vulcan or the one at, uh, I don't know. Whipping. I don't know, but it's at Ooh. seven. So one of them, they're both very good. That's what I heard. Yeah. And Lucas par- is the best. He's the best, the best. Um, and part of me wants to just fucking do the set. I did a Vulcan and just murder, but I'm also like, like that Amber alert. I have a bunch of things that are close to being. You weren't the, the Amber alert bit wasn't in that set. No, oh, that's new. Wow, that's like, dude, that yeah, bit was slapping. That's uh, a. I'm so happy about that yeah. bit. Um, and the bit of calls back is also like pretty new, not as new, but pretty new. And so I want to make myself do new stuff. And then when the Creek offered me a show, I was like, well, I don't just want to do the same fucking headline set. So I was like, well, why don't I do like some kind of crowd work show? And I'm not that great at crowd work, but I have been doing it more in Austin since I've been drinking. Mm-hmm. And it's been a blast. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, it's a Friday night slot. I'm going to get a bunch of comics I fucking love and we'll do crowd work together on stage. And it's yeah. weird and different and maybe it'll tank, uh, but maybe it could also be really cool and something different. And then you'll be on the next one or you'll be on the next one or whatever. And to hold the door for the vets. Um, and <laughs> the... Uh, uh, Thanks, hey, man. crowd work. Bing, bing. Someone's got to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because uh, the, the country doesn't. Um, <laughs> let's talk about PTSD. Do we have time? Okay. okay so one story I wanted to hear oh, for yeah, fucking yeah. sure. Because um, sure. I've seen this video a million times and I had no idea that you were this guy. Oh, no. Oh, no. Thank God. The Austin okay. incident yeah. with Alex Jones and Doug Stanhope. Yeah, fuck yeah. Do you mind telling that story? I mean, there's not much of a st- I mean, so... Uh, Doug brought me out to, I think I, I emceed. I wasn't even featuring. Mm. MC'd in Austin. It was the first stand-up I ever did in Austin. It was at Cap City. And, you know, Doug was, like, in a phase where he was getting bored and was just, <laughs> and this is before it was all his audience. Yeah. So everywhere we went, it was, like, 
25% <laughs> weirdo Stanhope fans, and then like 75% a comedy club. And like, yeah. I, I remember we did, I mean, this story to me was the, the, a couple months before we did the Baltimore improv. And this was far scarier to me than the Austin incident, even though mm. ha, spoiler half the audience leaves we're in Baltimore and Doug, he's just sitting there in the morning after I rolled out of his bed <laughs> and he was just like, oh, I'm so bored with my act. And we start watching the news and the only story that's being played on the news is a local story about an uncle killing his three nieces. And Doug doesn't say anything. He doesn't say, I'm going to write about this. He's just like, mm. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so I spend the day trying to like hang out with Doug. And then um, the we get up on stage or we do the show. And he opens by being like, uh, you know, give it up for Kilstein. He's staying in uh, my hotel room. And he segues that into <laughs> this like masturbating bit, this bit about jerking off where he's like, I've been trying to like hint to Jamie to leave. Like, hey, are you feeling peckish? Or like whatever Stanhope yeah. word he, I, something like that. Um, Cause all he wants to do is jerk off and I'm not leaving the hotel. Cause I'm, so he's doing this and I'm like, yeah. oh, this is brilliant, blah, blah, blah. He segues that into one of his like solid bits about uh, going down, uh, uh, porn wormholes and about like you know, he can't even jerk off to normal stuff anymore and he has to start looking for like midget weird porn whatever mm -hmm. he finally gets rid of me and he knows he only has a certain amount of time before fucking I come back because I'm poor and I can barely afford food and you know whatever and uh, and he's trying to jerk off trying to jerk off and he finally gets to this point where he thinks he's gonna come and suddenly he hears on CNN three little girls were murdered in Baltimore today <laughs> by their uncle and he's like but it was too late and I came <laughs> and these fucking dude so many people tried to fight him like had to get removed and we're not talking about like boo like a dude stood up like and started walking towards the stage and had to be like physically like stopped and so that was the kind of shit doug was doing so we go to austin and he goes uh, hey alex jones is here tonight and i again still consider myself it, it wasn't when i was doing like the wokey like progressive stuff but i was like very liberal mm. and i went fucking Awesome. <laughs> because all I knew about Alex Jones yeah. was that he knew Bill Hicks. And he's from here, right? All, yes. He's born and raised in yes. Austin, Texas. And all I knew is that he was friends with Bill Hicks because it wasn't just Alex Jones that was there. It was that dude. It was Hicks's best friend, uh, Kevin, uh, the dude who produced all of his like videos and shit. They made videos together. They did mushrooms together. Kevin something. So it was Kevin and it was Alex Jones. And so, I mean, dude, there was a point when like Occupy Wall Street, Jamie Kilstein, whatever, there is a picture that I have of me and Alex Jones and I am so happy. It just yeah. big smile. Just like, <laughs> hey, this guy, this picture is not going to come back and fucking haunt me. <laughs> By the way, the only reason I'm looking at my phone is in case Vulcan, they just texted me and we're like, in case I have to leave. Um, okay. and, and so, um, uh, Doug just goes, all right, you do your set and then bring up Alex Jones, I think. Or did Doug come up? No, I think I brought him up originally. That's what happened. Okay, so I bring him up. So again, there is video footage of fucking super liberal Jamie being like, you guys, we're in for a treat. Or like whatever the fuck I said. Yeah. I was so excited to bring him up. Like I was like, I think I asked his credits and he was like, he said, like, introduce me as, like, the king of conspiracies or whatever. Mm. And I, I'm i just, I look like such a fucking shitty open micer. I have long hair and a backwards hat, and I'm holding my Bud Light on stage because that's what Doug drank. And, mm. yeah, I bring him up. And, again, all I knew about him was that he knew Bill Hicks. And he just starts, again, you correct me because you've definitely seen it. Uh, more recently than I have, but he just starts unloading. <laughs> Definitely like not yeah. doing bits uh, just about the new world order and stuff like that. <laughs> and half the audience, they start fucking freaking out and <laughs> booing. And some of them are probably booing because of whatever crazy shit Alex is saying. But other people are booing because they're like, we paid for a comedy show. <laughs> Who is this sweaty, fat lunatic? Doug was probably thrilled. Dude, Doug, Doug was like laughing so fucking hard. And at some point, <laughs> and feel free, you guys, to write us in. And because uh, again, I can't watch it. Yeah. But I believe Doug walks on stage. Everyone starts cheering like Doug's going to save the day. 
And Doug just goes, ah, fuck you. You got to keep listening, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then Doug leaves and Alex keeps unloading. And then when Doug gets up, now Doug is furious at half the audience. Yeah. F- who were probably right. Yeah. And so Doug starts walking even more people. Doug doesn't try to win them back. He starts fucking unloading on the people who were mad that Alex Jones was at a comedy show. And then, yeah, I think we all got fired. Uh, <laughs> it became called the Austin Incident. Um, and yeah, that was, uh, that was me. Legendary that, Cap City Comedy Club story. That was young Jamie. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was little, little, little fucking me. What um, year was that? I'm so bad with years. I don't know. I, I know. Well, dude, that. so you said you're turning 40 next week. Yeah. And you started comedy in 01, so you were. Yeah. Fucking young. Uh-huh. You started comedy before you were 20? Yeah. 18? I mean, technically it was 2000 because I dropped out of high school. My first open mic was probably 99 or 2000. And then again, let's say there have been five years of breaks mm-hmm. or of quitting. Um, so I like average it to like 15 years probably. That's pretty intense, dude. But I've been around for a lot. Yeah. yeah like, and I forget that. Until, like you've seen like the early 2000s era of New York comedy. Yeah. Which, like, I mean, I used to open for Patrice. Patrice before he died had all of my like VHS pro wrestling tapes that I brought him in Hoboken. Um, like there's just cool shit that I, I think because... Whenever I've quit comedy, I've treated mm. it like an ex where I'm like, block, don't want to talk about it, don't want to feel like a failure, fuck comedy, mm. comedy's toxic, comedy's, you know, whatever, and I've shit on it, <clears throat> and I've really, like, it's it only... a little toxic, but that's all right. Well, for sure. But it's only recent, but so is, like, an office job. Um, mm. But it's only been recently that I've, like, let myself just love it, even if I have a shitty show. Like, I just let myself love comedy, which is why, like... You know, I'll even like, like I'll watch local guys who I don't know or whatever. And remembering all these stories and like how fucking lucky I am. Like it tells the reason I got Montreal. He didn't know me, but he saw my set and he walked up to fucking Robbie who now books Netflix, who I, uh, uh, we used to be friends, but I believe during my self-righteous days, I screamed at him about Palestine and called him a war criminal or something. And then I'm like, who books Netflix? They're like, Robbie. And I'm like, fuck. Uh, I was like, well, I guess you like dead kids was probably like the last thing I said to him, even though he was the one who got me Montreal. But yeah, Tell walked up to him and was like, you better fucking use him like after that set. And it's like, I don't know that sealed it but maybe um or yeah even doing like guest sets for Geraldo like fucking Geraldo was one of the best and he died and he would have been one of the best he's an all-timer that people don't really know about that much no which is crazy and to me he I mean he was one of my first hero because he got looped in with all the I mean just there's so many other legendary dead New York comics from that era like like Patrice just cast such a big shadow that it's like oh my god remember the Geraldo Leary thing did you ever see that from Tough Crowd no where he called out Leary for being a fucking hack for stealing people's material yeah yeah, Dennis Leary tried to go at Geraldo because Geraldo uh, Leary like didn't YouTube it tonight Uh, I will also because I don't want to misquote this but like Leary Essentially was just phoning it in on Tough Crowd, being a celebrity, and Geraldo was killing, because Geraldo's a killer writer, and Leary tried to, like, make fun of him for that, where he was like, oh, you're, like, the kid in school who prepared, and Geraldo's like, yeah, I wrote jokes for a comedy show, and then Geraldo just fucking unleashed on him, like, he didn't ask for it, but just unleashed on him, and you're like, yeah, you were one of the fucking, he was one of the best of all time, I think, Geraldo, and especially... Watching him at clubs, you know, like the Comedy Central presents specials are fine. You go, oh, these are good joke writers. But man, when he was like completely unleashed, like at clubs, it was just fucking, I mean, art, 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 art. And so, yeah, man, like I'm really trying to like appreciate all that shit more instead of making it all negative. You know, like there was a phase where even like my friendship with Robin, I was like, yeah, but he died. It's like, yeah, but also (laughs) like when he died, the president went on air to talk about him and he was one of my closest friends. And like, that's wild. What a cool thing, right? Like he was so fucking wonderful as a human that you would think if, um, I would think that if people, so many people have come up to me or posted or DM me and been like, man, I cried when Robin died. And you would think that my gut reaction would be like, fuck you. Yeah. (laughs) Like he was like, fuck off. And he was just so what everyone wanted him to be, but better that I just go, yep, like I get it. I totally get it. And then I'm going to tell you that he was just as good, if not better than you think so that you know that. Really? Oh, a hundred percent. And like, I didn't even get jealous. What was crazy is like, 
he helped me so much. I don't talk about this on a ton of shows, but he helped me so much that when he died, I think I did like two things. I did like one thing for MSNBC, maybe like people, but like I was like, I'm just gonna do one thing to like say all the cool things he did so that it's out there because it's about him and then I'm not gonna fucking talk to anyone else about it. But what was wild is like so many people from famous people to people I never heard of had stories similar really? to, yeah, to just, I met Robin and he did this incredible thing for me. I met Robin and he did this incredible thing for me. And I was just like, fuck yes. Like, That's awesome. It was the best. Yeah, the absolute best. Um, anyway, but yeah, like actually appreciating that instead of being like, oh, well, fucking. That was the thing that the, happened and it's over. And Yeah. yeah. I, and of course, like, you know, he convinced me not to quit and then he died and I quit. And so now I actually get to look back and be like, oh, I'm doing it. Like I'm doing the thing for him and like for me. Um, yeah. And that's fucking awesome. I do want to write a bit about it, though, because like he talked me out of suicide so the idea of like, because this uh, this was one of my first thoughts. Like when the dude who tells you not to kill yourself kills himself, you're like, ah, I'm fucked. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, I feel like there's something Holy there. Holy shit. Um, but I haven't cracked that, obviously, yet. Yeah, it's uh, a tough nut to crack. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tough one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, holy fuck, man. Yeah, dude. It's been fucking, it has been a weird, very emotional career that I kind of am hoping you know, at this like 40 year mark. I mean, that's another thing cool about comedy, right? Especially compared to like fighting mm -hmm. where it's, you look at all the guys we love, they, they were all doing very well, but they peaked at like 50. Yeah. I mean, even fucking Chappelle, like, I mean, Rogan, like they were all huge and did things, but I mean like peak peak, like Burr, Rogan. Yeah. They're Burr, all actually Segura. peaking right now. It's now. It's they're, right now. Yeah. It's all happening to them and they're all between I think Tom's the youngest at 45, right. well, between 45 and 50. Which is so speaking. huge, right? Because I've had so many failures. It's like with music. We're, we're both big into music. Yep. It's an incredibly frustrating thing because it's like, dude, I'm like 28 and I know I'm too old for music right now. Right, right. right. It well, it's same with if you're in LA and you're acting. Even a, yeah. lot of, a lot of LA with like comedy. It's like just so many fucking hot people who aren't funny are getting booked because they have like 50,000 followers on Instagram. And uh, yeah, what a bunch of assholes. <laughs> but here, <laughs> yeah, fucking hot people with a following on Instagram. Uh, whatever. I got a blue check. That still gets me some cloud for my shitty 15,000. Yeah, I got to I gotta, I gotta get one of those you. checks. No what? one asked you. <laughs> <laughs> but like I am. Um, <laughs> but that's such a big thing because if I was turning 40 and I had gone through all the failures that I've gone through, like I feel like this is the best I've been doing with comedy ever. Even though like maybe not on paper. Dude, you're smashing. Well, you're smashing sets. And the thing is we're really lucky in that like we are in this really special era where like, yeah, it fucking sucks that you you told the guy from Netflix about Palestine, right? right? Like that sucks. <laughs> but the reality of the situation is – we're at a very lucky time right now where there's nothing stopping you from selling out and shooting yourself a three camera shot of like, like even just the half hour of the shit you want to get rid of, right. film it, put it up on Instagram and all of a sudden, boom, fucking selling out well, on the road and, again, and dude. And even it's fucking not, in, it's, it's totally within. Well, and like Luis Gomez was like, Hey, gas digital is going to start putting out specials. Like, you know, like other people are going to start competing or you see what happened with, you know, um, all the people who are putting it out on YouTube, like Shane Gillis, like put it out on YouTube. And dude, it's, yeah, like, now it's, he's like the biggest comic in the world. He got went from getting canceled to a free YouTube stand up special, by the way, also not to coming by going like total right wing after he got canceled. Cause me and him talked about that. Yeah. Um, but like was just funny the, again with Provenza, the language was just, I'm just going to be fucking funny. And, as fuck. and now he's being recognized as one of the best comics in the world. As he and should be. As he should be. He dropped the best special of the year last year. And special was, I mean, that special was why I wanted to start doing comedy again. Where I was Damn. just like, oh, like, fuck. Like, watching him go after both sides, watching him just put funny first, no agenda, no, like, oh, I got canceled, so I have to go after this guy. Like, it was just so... Well, Louis put it so well when he was talking to him about it. He's like, the thing that SNL missed out on when it came to you is that, like, you have Trumpers in your family and you love them. So he's like, when you talk shit about people who voted for Trump, it's coming from a place of love yeah. because you love those people. And I'm like, I'm in the same boat. It's like, whereas SNL right now, is just like, fuck everyone that disagrees with us. You're right. all fucking losers. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Like, we have Pete Holmes playing Joe Rogan. It's like fucking. So did you see that bit? No, oh, it's Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson. Yeah. 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 Oh. 
Pete, Pete Holmes, Pete David, very different guys. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking very different calibers of women, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> but the like, um, yeah. Well, and that's what I'm even trying to do when I talk about politics. Like having been the super woke person and thinking I was doing it for the right reasons and now having conservative friends who, by the way, I'm still pretty much liberal, but like my conservative friends have my back more. They're better people yeah. <laughs> than my old lefty friends. And I disagree with them. And like, and having to wrestle with that too, you know, um, I think those are such more unique perspectives than just being like Trump's orange. It's like <laughs> who cares? Oh yeah. We just got through a four year era of that. I mean, dude, yeah, I think it's, but and that's the same as Biden's old, right? Like you can yeah. like p pick them apart. That that's why with Obama, it's like I had a bit about how much I liked them, and then I had a bit about the fucking drone strikes because it's like both those things are true. Yeah, I don't remember any bits about Obama in that era. I wasn't watching that much stand up. Uh, yeah, was like, it was me, and I got in trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this man is perfect. We don't talk shit about him. Um, yeah, no, it was me, and I got in trouble. Uh, I compared it to getting out of an abusive relationship with Bush about how we're still in a fucking abusive. One, but like the last guy was so bad that we're like a, um, essentially. Yeah. I mean, pretty valid point. <laughs> um, but the, I was going to say something on what we're talking about right before, um, comedy scene, Rogan, SNL. Fuck. God damn it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to remember. No, it's all right. But dig, as, yeah, dig, it, dig, don't. Be, Do drugs. Oh, sh uh, oh no. <laughs> it was just a selfish question I wanted to ask. Uh, with the Shane and Louie thing, I thought they hilariously did a four-part podcast where they didn't talk about any of that stuff, and they only talked about presidents, and that was the bit. Did they actually talk about, like, cancel nope. stuff? They talked about the presidents. They did. <laughs> Dude, I I'm on the third part right now. It is one of the funniest podcasts I've ever is heard. Is it funny because they're not addressing the elephant in the room, it's, or because it's, it's funny actually just because funny? They're funny. They, it's funny. And right. it's funny because... They go on some tangents. Yeah, they get into bits. They get really bitty with it. It's, yeah. it's honestly like genius. Like, it's so fucking When funny. I saw... when it's I, the best it's, idea for a podcast I've ever seen. Let's yeah. have the two cancel guys. Come on, Louis. I believe this is the first podcast he's done. Yeah, and they did four hours <laughs> about presidents of the United States. And did States. not address like That's accusations. Unbelievable. That is it's how good. So funny. I didn't Yo. even think of the irony of that they're clearly doing a bit. I didn't even yeah. think of it. I just thought <laughs> the they president. just thought they were no. really, I, thought they I was like, the presidents. Bro, Louie didn't do Rogan. Yeah, wow. And he did his openers podcast. Matt and Shane. Dude, and is, only talked about I think it's perfect presidents Rogan, of days old. I don't think Rogan would have like rolled with the president thing. It, it, uh, it, yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But dude, it's it's brilliant too because it's like, oh, it's, dude, yeah, it's, what you realize listening to that is like, you go, holy shit. I got to like have other things going on in my life aside from comedy. And that's what a lot of people don't get is like, you start listening to this podcast and you go, oh, fucking like. It seems to me like Louis is crushing a history book a week, right? Like, or just like even like, Shane is so like, smart on these yeah, guys. Yeah, both of them are reading at a Dude, clip. Dude, the first episode, Shane names, he lists all, all, he so names funny. all the presidents. That was memory. all I got through. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I was working on that last night. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, um, so I used to do improv a little bit at UCB yeah, yeah. in New York. Yeah. <laughs> 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 fucking gay street light. Um, and. Uh, uh, one of the one of the improv teachers there gave such good advice where he's like, what, all these people, they become fucking obsessed with the theater and all they do is they go to improv shows every night and they're going to classes during the day and then they have practice and whatever. And he's like, what the fuck are you going to talk about? Yeah. He's like, when people ask, what should I be doing to get better at improv? He's like, live your life. Go date. Go to a museum. Read a book. Like, go travel somewhere. Try, like... Yeah, play and, cards and, with your boys. Fucking that's what it smoke is. crack, and that's what you yeah, and yeah. that and they get canceled. Like that's what you were talking about with you know with those guys, where it's like, yeah, man, if you're just watching comedy every night, that's all you're digesting. But if you're reading a history book and suddenly you're like, oh my god, this fucking I have a John Adams reference that can go into my Tinder bit. Like that rules, yeah, and that's gonna unreal. make it just widens your fucking vocabulary. Your comedic vocabulary. You have so much more shit to pull from. Like, I think, you know, all my years in politics is why I got a fucking Supreme Court reference into an IUD joke. That's fucking It's like, awesome. right, because that's, my brain still knows that shit, you know? Yeah, and it's, dude, I mean, just people do fall for that trap incredibly hard where it's just like, you know, com like, comedy's my fucking life, man. Comedy's all I care about. And it's like, dude, well, um, 
I don't know. What are you going to write bits about? How much you love comedy? Right. Is that, is that right, going right. to be the joke? Well, and then I the, love comedy so much. Yeah. How, how much, much do you love it? it? <laughs> Boo. Yeah. yeah. I, well, and uh, there's another part of me, and this could go back to enabling bad habits for comedy, but that's another reason why I'm like, mm, you know what? I don't want to be totally sober. And like, I probably should have gone out to see that band with you, the one that you asked me to. And like, Oh yeah, you when, know, when and I went to see Fuzz. Yeah, that was and I me. and I still should like. I don't have to say no to like every girl that I hook up with. Like you also have to like live your life. Yeah, you gotta I'm, live a little wild life, dude. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But and then it, you have to have that balance. You gotta have the so balance. You, so you so you're still fucking hustling and working and you know. But also you're getting the stories. nice thing about this though is that this job you can get pretty good writing 15 minutes a day and doing one spot a night you can get pretty fucking sick and stand up doing that incredibly yeah (laughs) i mean literally today and you look at it that is that is a grand total of 30 minutes a day of work that is three and a half hours of work a week yep you can handle it it's not bad i brought my computer to the pool today and i was like i'm gonna gonna write for an hour and uh, like I ended up started like this girl was texting me. So I started texting her and then I kind of like spaced out and I was like, fuck, I didn't work. And then I looked back and I was like, oh no, I wrote the one line that was missing in this bit. Yeah. And that's actually better than huge. sitting down and working on all day. Yeah. Or just being like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to read from a newspaper and write 10 topical jokes as like a drill. It's like, no, I've actually been trying to crack that. And so like, that is a victory for com- for comedy writing. That's a victory, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, when I interviewed John Cleese, he talked about um, having time to play. Wait, where, were you? Did you do that interview? Were you the one that interviewed him at Esther's Follies when the chaos broke out? No, I just interviewed him on like my podcast. That's so sick, though. Wait, what was that story? He got in trouble. Oh, funny enough, he told <laughs> yeah. me we talked about cancellations on my podcast, mm-hmm. and he was like, he was like, Jamie, I got canceled all the time. I don't know why. He's like, <laughs> someone tells me my name's on Twitter. I don't look, and it doesn't affect me. And I'm like, that is the fucking life, dude. That Who is cancels an eighty year old guy? What a dick you have to be. <laughs> no, um, no, no, no. I interviewed him. Uh, yeah, just for my podcast because I opened for him in Vancouver, and we really, That's we sick. like, we hit it off, and. Uh, he was talking about, he wrote a book called like, I think it's just called like on creativity. It's a really little book. And he talks about, you have to give yourself time for play and for your mind to wander and to fucking stare off and like be okay with that. Yeah. You know, I think sometimes when comics, especially cause I've done this, you know, you hear, you know, uh, John Mulaney writes for three hours a day or whatever. Um, Does he though? Like, no, he's fucking Olivia Munn on cocaine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and the, I, uh, uh, me trying to replicate that, it just sounds like I'm b- writing bad monologue jokes where yeah. it's like, today in the news, I'm like, mm, I can't do that. But I can look at a set list and be like, I want to do some new stuff. I can reread a joke and be like, oh, that's the line that's missing. I can, you know, and I think everyone's going to find their own writing um, rhythm or we'll whatever. figure it out eventually. Yeah, it's. I just think you got to just fucking live it and just put the, put the bare minimum effort in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes you get that crazy. It's like I was walking to my car the other day and I solved one of my jokes. And I was like, oh, right. You That's know? my way. Yeah. R- walking and thinking is yep. the best way for me. You just have your brain. If your brain is trained to think about comedy, the shit will just pop in. It'll, it'll happen. 100%. You know? Yeah. 100%. Dude, I think we're at, Matt, what are we at? Hour 40? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. We fucking rule. We blew, we blew right past it. I fucking love it. This was... Uh, Hell yeah, dude. Little, sometimes it's too fucking easy. This is one of those too easy podcasts. For sure. Where we just get right there. But... Um, do people listen to this? Should I plug my shit? Yeah. Yes, please do. Hell yeah. Uh, my podcast is called A Fuck Up's Guide to the Universe. Uh, or you can go to jamiekilsteinpodcast.com. Yeah, the John Cleese was like, uh, I think last month. And then my last guest, I did a breakup episode with the very famous porn star, Nicole Aniston. That's how I dealt with my, my breakup. Hell yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I, I do a bunch of solo episodes and it's, it'll, I'll talk about mental health a lot, but from a place of like, Hey, I'm a fuck up and I'm, I'm figuring it out. Um, my Instagram is at the Jamie Kilstein slide in those DMS. Um, that's it. I just want to plug my Instagram and my fucking podcast. And then, yeah, I do shows now in Austin. Book He's, me for your go shows. Go fucking see him. He's great <laughs> at stand up. And for, uh, for me, I'm taking a month off baby and, uh, I'm going back to the farm in Connecticut. So I'm going to miss you legitimately. I'm I'm going to miss you you too, bro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But we'll be back. I'll be back in a month. We'll get after it. And uh, I'm actually going to edit these fucking clips and get them out there. So that's, that's all I got.